Hello friends, welcome to the next session on knowledge representation. Today we will talk about scripts. We already spoke about conceptual dependency in the previous lecture. Now conceptual dependency was based on the events and today scripts they are similar to the frames and these are the easiest way of representing a knowledge. Because here what we will be doing is we will represent a scenario type like a particular event which is followed by sub events. right? one of the simplest method of knowledge representation. Let's look at what it is. So it, script is a structure that describes a stereotype sequence of events in a particular context. Stereotype means simple day to day like what we have, something typical which we know, okay, this is what will follow this. It is similar to a thought sequence or a chain of situations which could be anticipated, right? Which we can guess, okay, this is what will happen next. Use it uses a frame like structure to represent the commonly occurring experiences like going to the college, eating in a restaurant, shopping in a supermarket, or visiting a doctor. These are some small events what can be represented using scripts. Thus, a script is a structure that describes a set of circumstances that could be expected to follow from one another, right? So we can guess, okay, what will be the next event? Now, what are the components of a script? You have an entry condition. Now, these are the basic condition which must be fulfilled before events in the script can occur, right? Before the script to start, there is some, this is nothing but the prerequisite. Like simple example, if you want to catch a bus. Now, what is the entry condition? You must be standing on the bus stop. Now, results condition that will be true after events in the script occurred, but the person could catch the bus. Props. The slots representing objects involved in the events. Now, what is the object involved in the catching a bus? Bus is an object, right? Roles. Now, these are the actions that the individual participants perform. Now, what is the one? The one who wants to board a bus, he's an actor, right? Now, track variations on the script. Different tracks may share components of the same script. Now, since the sequence of events that occur. So, one script will have set of sequences one after the other in a sequence. Now, if you can just remember the last time what we have spoke in conceptual dependency, we are the same set of action symbols, right? But we are using here in scripts also. So, A trans, that is transfer a relationship, that is give, P trans, physical location of an object is getting transferred, you go, propel, applying a physical force to an object, moving a body part by the owner, grasp, grab an object by an actor, ingest, taking an object by an animal, eat, expel, expel from animal's body, M trans, transfer mental information, M built, mentally make new information. Cons is conceptualization, producing, speak is produce sound, attend, focus, sense organ, that is listen or see, right? So now the concept will be more clear once we look at the examples. So let us start with the very first example. So what is the first example? We are writing a script to withdraw money from a bank, right? The script title is withdraw money. What is the track? Track is bank. What are the props we'll be using? The objects will be using money, counter, form and token. Because to withdraw the money, to withdraw the money, you have to go to counter and before going to the counter, you need to fill up the form. Once you fill up the form, a cashier gives you the token, right? Now, what are the roles here? These are the actors who will be there in this whole scenario. First one is the customer represented with P, the bank employee, E, and then the cashier, C, fine. What is the entry condition? Customer has no or less money and the bank is open, right? These are the prerequisites for the person to go and withdraw the money. What is the result? P has more money because he withdrew money, now he has more money. It's very simple. Now let us look at it in detail. Scene one, customer entering into the bank. So customer is represented by P, P trans P, that is physical movement of the person into the bank. Now P attend eyes to E, that means P searches for the employee. Now he moves towards the employee. This is entering into the bank. Now, scene two, filling up the form. Now, customers M trans, that is he signals to the employee. Employee hands over form to the P, that is customer. Customer uses P 
explain to fill up the form then he fills up the form and he hands over the form to the employee now this is scene 2 scene 3 withdrawing money so now what he goes he searches for the counter right through the eyes he searches for the counter he moves towards the counter and stands in the queue right he hands over the token to the cashier and cashier gives him the money right this is your scene 3 now after this what is the last scene exiting the bank so p trans p that is p is moving out of the bank it's very simple right scene 1 you enter into the bank and these are the events you carry is carried out in entering the event these are the actions carried out in filling up the form actions carried out to withdraw the money and action to car carried out to move out of the bank this is a script for withdrawing a money from the bank right let us look at another example now another example is robbing a bank to rob a bank what you need you need a gun you need to hold up a bank and then after that you need to escape with the money right so how do you write the script for this script is robbing a bank track is again a bank now what are the props used here l is representing loot g is the gun b is the bag and c is a car in which you will be running away after robbing a bank fine now who are the actors or the roles here robber who is going to rob cashier is represented as m o is the bank manager and p is the policeman fine these are the rules now what is the entry condition for the robber robber should be poor who is going to rob it right and robber is destitute means he is too poor like doesn't have a penny he is penniless you can say that is why he wants to rob the bank what is the result r has more money because he already loot the bank he is robbed the bank manager is angry because o is represented by bank manager m is in the state of shock who is m m is the cashier is in the state of shock and policeman is shocked right this is a simple script for robbing a bank let us look at it in detail there are three scenes getting a gun so to get a gun what you do the robber moves into a gun shop that is speed trans physical movement right and then he thinks of the choice of gun which type of gun he wants to buy he makes a choice and he buys the gun right this is a simple getting a gun after getting a gun the scene 2 comes i forgot to write here go to scene 2 now scene 2 is holding up the bank to hold up the bank what happens the robber runs walks into the bank that is speed trans physical movement he searches he looks at right where is the cashier where is the manager and where is the policeman standing in the bank then he moves towards the cashier he takes the gun out he grabs the gun right and he the robber points the gun towards the cashier gun for g m is the cashier right now then he says the robber says give me the money or else to the cashier now the policeman comes into the picture he say holds it hold it hands up to the robber robber takes the gun out and shoots with the gun now policeman the bullets from the gun policeman gets injured with the bullets from the gun now cashier transfers all the loot to r that is robber robber puts the loot into the bag b then robber moves out of the bank that is p r p trans exit bank manager raises an alarm alarm right now go to scene 3 go to scene 3 is get away so robber p trans c that is robber physically moves out with the carry away car c isn't it that simple robbing a bank with only three scenes now let us look at another example that is visiting a restaurant now what are the objects here or the propels here props here that is tables menu food money etc roles or the actors here customer waiter cook cashier owner what is the entry condition customer is hungry and customer has money otherwise you won't come to the restaurant now what is the result customer is not hungry customer has less money and owner is has more money why customer ate the food so he is not hungry he paid money he paid the bill so he is less money now and owner got more money 
what may be the scene scene is first scene is entering that is entering into the restaurant so customer enters the restaurant looks at the tables decides where to sit moves towards the table and then customer sits second is ordering that is wait waiter brings the menu let us look at the whole thing in a single screenshot the data I have taken the screenshot is taken from the lecture notes on knowledge representation by philip cohen right and even you can look at the reference here so i'll not dis discuss it in detail because you already know now how to read script now props roles entry condition and result see here customer is pleased is optional provided he likes the food and now owner has more money right entering he enters into the restaurant then he orders right when he is ordering there are so many sub tasks involved in it right then it is third scene is eating right and fourth is exiting now if you are not ready to get anything you don't like anything under this thing then you can go to scene four at no pay path directly and you move out of the path you can pause the video and look at this carefully it is very simple to understand as per the two examples what i have already explained to you all fine okay now what are the benefits as you can see it is very easy to represent the knowledge it is very easy to write your own it is very easy to imagine also how the given situation can be turned into a script now when it is ability to predict events events tend to occur in known or known runs or patterns we already know when the customer wants to eat something he'll walk to the restaurant he'll search for the table he'll sit there he'll order looking at the menu if he doesn't like he'll walk out right so events tends to occur in known runs or patterns a casual relationship between events exist a single coherent interpretation may be built up from a collection of observations so looking at these observations we can infer something an entry condition exists which allows an event to take place that means entry condition there is some prerequisite right now if your customer is walking into the restaurant prerequisite is what he should have money in his pocket now prerequisites exist upon events taking place example when a student progresses through a degree scheme or when a purchaser buys a house now let us see if it has any limitation of course it is less general than frames may not be suitable to represent all kinds of knowledge because here you can represent something which is stereotype which is very common and we know okay this is what will happen but you cannot apply this to all types i hope the script was clear it is the simplest knowledge representation technique thank you stay home stay safe